Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard. One of my favorite overhead run and gun arcade shooters has got to be Capcom's Mercs. It was a great arcade game that had a great port to the Sega Genesis that even included its own sort of quasi sequel that was also, well, pretty great. And who was responsible for developing this awesome Genesis port? Sega! That's right, it was none other than Sega themselves. If Sega could deliver such an excellent port to the Genesis, and even throw an excellent little mini-sequel onto the same cartridge, well, just imagine how amazing it would have been if they had made their own overhead run-and-gun arcade game in the same style as Mercs. Hmm... Well, wonder no more, my retro gaming friends, because Sega did in fact make their own game that was very similar to Mercs. It was released on the System 18 board in 1992 and is called Desert Breaker. So how is it? Is it amazing or amazing? That's what you'll find out today in my review of Desert Breaker, one of the many Sega arcade games that never found its way onto any contemporary home platform of the time. Okay, so right off the bat, you may notice that this game bears just a teeny weeny itty bitty resemblance to Capcom's much more famous game. Yeah, there's no denying it. Visually, this game is squarely in ripoff territory. I mean, Look at how you get power-ups in this game, and even what the containers look like. It's also three players, just like arcade mercs. I think if you took out the UI elements and showed any gamer familiar with 90s arcade games a screenshot of this and asked them what they were looking at, they would inevitably say, What? And then they'd say mercs. And Desert Breaker doesn't just look like mercs, it really feels like mercs and how it handles. So far, looking and feeling like mercs isn't exactly a bad thing, considering mercs was a great game. So Sega must have totally nailed it, what am I waiting for? My review score for Desert Breaker is not- And no, it's not that simple. Looking and controlling kinda like Mercs is where the similarities end. So let's talk a bit about the game itself, shall we? Desert Breaker tries to add a few things into the established formula. You get a run button. When you run, you're invincible. No, you can't just hold it all the time. You run for a short burst typically in the direction you're facing and then stop. You can control the direction a little bit. There are four weapons, a machine gun, a flamethrower, an acid thrower, and a shotgun. The flamethrower and acid thrower are almost identical, so really it's more like there's three weapons. Bombs work differently than mercs. You collect little icons to fill up a meter at the top of the screen. Once the meter hits a certain point, you can use a bomb. But if you fill the meter up all the way before hitting the bomb button, the blast will be more powerful. At the start of a level, you can also select a section of the level to get air support, where a friendly plane will drop a bomb killing everything on screen for you once you reach that specific area. You can also ride vehicles, and there are a few short auto-scrolling sections. This game only has three levels. Yeah. Three. The first level is of typical length for a game of this type but levels 2 and 3 are about 3 times longer than they should be, and just drag on and on. The second two levels should really have been broken down into two or three distinct levels each. This game takes about 20 to 30 minutes to complete based on your skill, which is reasonable for an arcade game of this type. So the length itself is fine, but it feels so drawn out because of how long the last two levels are. The game looks fine for the time it came out, not particularly good or bad. The music is just okay, and at times doesn't really fit the action too well, but it might have worked in a different type of game. Where this game really falters is in the gameplay itself. You see, it's just not much fun to play. What's wrong with the gameplay? Lots. First off, the difficulty is really designed with three players simultaneous play in mind. So if you're tackling this game single player, it's really kind of unfair. Some enemies take too long to kill, some types of damage will drain 90% of your life bar in a single hit. And with those types of shenanigans, why even have a life bar? And you of course only get one life per credit. Oh yeah, collision detection ain't the best either, and enemies have weird invincibility frames. I'd also add that in sections where you have to scroll the screen horizontally, that the screen doesn't actually move until you're right at the very edge, which can lead to a lot of surprise hits. Remember those icons I mentioned that fill up your bomb meter? You don't get enough of them to use them nearly often enough during stages. In fact, I found it best to save them for the bosses. Those bosses can be insanely difficult. 
Yeah, there's only three, but they sure can drain your pocket of quarters, particularly the second two bosses. But here's the thing. If you go into these fights with a fully charged bomb meter, you can make these incredibly difficult bosses incredibly easy. One fully charged bomb blast along with a sustained flamethrower attack can take them down in a couple of seconds. And don't bother with any weapons other than the flamethrower. The rest of them are too weak to damage more powerful enemies in any significant way. Those vehicle sections I talked about a little earlier? Well, they suck. They are really short and just aren't much fun. The firepower in the vehicles in particular just isn't good. Frankly, there's not a lot more to say here. Desert Breaker is not a compelling experience. It's completely average in just about every way. With a little more development time and some effort, Sega could have ended up with a much better game. It feels very much like some executive said, Mercs is making Capcom a bunch of money, get me a clone! And then the development team said, Okay, we can do that in 12 months. And then the executive replied with, You've got two! What I'm saying is, there's a distinct rushed feeling to this one and an utter lack of polish and identity. So that review score is average as it gets. 5 out of 10. Well, there you have it. Desert Breaker is just an average overhead run and gun shooting arcade game. Now, it's always sad when an arcade game is stranded and never receives a port to any home platform. But in the case of Desert Breaker, I completely understand. You see, this would not have arrived on the Genesis until 1993, and by that time the one-on-one -on -one fighter craze was in full effect, and even a great port of a mediocre game like this would not have been successful. And besides, Mercs was already available on the Genesis and is a way better game than this one. So that'll just about do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. What do you think about Desert Breaker? Do you have any obscure arcade games that were never ported to a home system that you'd like to see me review or cover? Go ahead and drop a comment and let me know. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later.